Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Riggs Garden and Morton Farm coming to you from the front of my Chrysler Town and Country van. It's been a week since we did the insect apocalypse video and it's not rained since then. Not at all. And there's just a few minor bug splotches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Minor. I'll not wash this windshield. This is a whole week. And it don't need washing. It could go maybe another week or two. Or longer. Today is the second of September. And there are still or should still be a lot of bugs out. Typically in the summertime, I would wash my windshield two times a week because it would get covered with bug splatter. I mean covered. And there would be splatter from big bugs. What we can find here is just a handful of little small splatter spots. And this is after an entire week of driving. And I drive at night, every night in this van, right after dark, or in an approaching dark. And I drive this thing to work 20 miles each way, and I drive around out here in the country in this van. And there's very, very, very few bug spots. And most of the spots you see on this, it's just stuff falling out of these trees and bushes around here. That's mostly what you see. There's really nothing of consequence on here in the world of bugs. And uh, I can probably go another week or two or three or four a month maybe without doing anything. It'll probably rain before I have to do anything. And, but there's no major large bug splatter. There's no really big bugs that have hit my windshield. Just a very few small ones. And like I said, I've normally had to wash my windshield twice a week. And when you drive through the countryside, you don't see all the bugs fogging across in front of the car. I'm going to show you some video in a little bit of the lights around here at nighttime lights that are not fluorescent lights that have almost no insects flying around them. Isn't that strange? And we're going to dig in. I'm going to go out here in the back and turn over some logs. And we're going to look under the logs. I'm sure we'll find a few bugs there, but how much? And before we go in the back to look at bugs, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel because this is how you get uh, all my future videos. you got to bang the update notification bell and that'll give you uh, updates to all my future videos. I'll do more videos on topics like this, various topics about why you should prep, about how to prep, how to survive uh, wild edibles. Uh, I'll give you videos about how to grow your own food. I give you videos about growing indoors, outdoors, and uh, I give you videos about growing worms. And you need worms to make your own fertilizer should the grid go down. Uh, you won't be able to run to the store and buy things. So link below www.greengregs.com and uh, check out my link to uh, my uh, Patriot Supply for pepper supplies and to be able to grow your own gardens. You need heirloom seeds because heirloom seeds allow you to plant plants that you can harvest the seeds from and replant them and get the same plants back. Hybrid plants do not allow you to do that. Again, truly mark it below. Now, having said all that, before we go in the back, let's look at one more windshield. This is my truck. And by the way, my truck, neither of my car has been to a washer in a while. And I do drive my truck around a fair bit. You may have noticed me uh, in the uh, uh, food shortage videos driving this truck. There's no bug splatter, even where the windshield wipers don't run. You see, no bug splatter, just a little dirt. Zero bug splatter. Okay, maybe a little bit right there. <laughs> so there might be some small traces. But, uh, I've been driving this thing also in the last week and there's no bugs. So just one more case. Uh, there are truly fewer flying insects in this area. Another thing I've noticed is that uh, at nighttime I'm not hearing the number of katydids I used to hear. There's some but you don't hear as many as you used to. The, the den is not as loud. We had the little bugs that crawl out of the, the ground, the cicadas. Uh, they usually make a lot of wreck in the summertime. This year I found very uh, two or three of the shells that they crawled out. Not so many. There's some, but they seem to be down. Why? Okay, the why for some of this stuff um, varies. Uh, and it also varies as to where you have these shortages. Um, I've got various viewers have responded, Greg, I have plenty of bugs. They're just all over the place. And others say, hey, I've got the same problem you have. Where do they go? It's splotchy. It's spotty. And last year, I had plenty. Last year, we were covered up with bugs. So where did they go? What happened to them? That's a mystery. 
but we think we know some of the clues of this mystery. And some of those items are as follows. Of course, everybody with the bees and pollinators are, expect, are, are suspecting the neonicotinoids, neonicotinoids, excuse me, which are the, uh, a pesticide, which has actually been approved for organic use to some degree. Uh, however, it seems to be killing bees in droves and other pollinator insects. But I've seen a recent article that even claims that uh, use of nitrogen in the farms is depleting a lot of the insects. Nitrogen, what we typically fertilize, the main fertilizer for growing green crops, nitrogen. It seems to also have an impact on insect populations. But to reinforce the neonicotinoid uh, concept, it seems that um, France and the Netherlands have banned it and they report that insects are on the return. They banned neonicotinoids and insects are coming back. So there is hope. We still can save ourselves. I mean, normally, bugs are bugs. They bug us. You know, it's like, Greg, why not care? They're bugs. I hate them. They bug us. Yeah, but they are really the quintessential canary in the coal mine. When insects come up missing in large droves, that's a sign that something basic is really amiss. Something is wrong. And they really are a uh, ground floor level of our food web. So when the insects start disappearing, you need to be aware. Something needs to be done. So I hope that we can get neonicotinoids banned and find other ways to take care of things, more organic ways to grow stuff. And I hope also that people just wake up and learn how to prepare. We're gonna start uh, learning how to pollinate our own stuff. I have had a viewer ask me how to show them how to do that. When I get some fresh tomatoes and blooming again, I will do that, it may be next spring. I will show how to, to do that with them. But typically for most plants, now I, I'll, I'll tell you, the tomatoes, just tap the balloons. Because they have male and female parts within each bloom, they will self-pollinate. All you just gotta do is tap them on the back side and it will shake loose and it will work. With a lot of other plants, if you take something like a small, fine little paintbrush and move around from, from bloom to bloom, that'll do it. Or maybe a Q-tip, but a little bit small, fine paintbrush is best. So we'll cover that more in the future. But anyway, let's go on the back and dig in and see if we can find some bugs. All right, here we are on the insect hunt. This is my squash bed, what's left of it. This squash is played out. It's dying out. It really wasn't that well maintained this year, unfortunately. Every other year when I've had squash, it would get put out of business by stink bugs, squash bugs. And if it played out at this point, it would be slap covered in stink bugs, squash bugs, whatever you want to call them. This year, now I've actually seen some stink bugs around outside in a few places. But, you know, they have little nymphs and they lay little eggs. I was going to do some videos on how to stop squash bugs. The only problem, and the reason I didn't do the video, is I'm not seeing any squash bugs in my squash this year. Now, several of you reported, yeah, I got squash bugs eating my squash up, Greg. Well, I ain't got them here. Had tons of them last year. Ah, uh, there's none this year. No squash bugs. Haven't seen them at all. I was going to do videos on it. Let's go on the other side. Again, this squash here uh, has grown up real bad. It is covered up with uh, mildew. And it's got some little ants and some little flea looking little beetles. But what I'm not seeing is the all invasive squash bug. None, zero. I'm not seeing any out here in my squash. I'd seen a few stink bugs in a couple of places earlier this year, but usually they turn in and totally consume and decimate my squash. Not this year. That's some wild mint growing there. That stuff grows fast. Where are the bugs? Where are the stink bugs? Squash bugs, what do you want to call them? Where are they at? They usually cover my squash up. Again, some of you says, Greg, I have them. They're in my garden. Yeah, I had them too last year. Are you going to have them next year? I don't know. I had tons of them last year and every year before, but for some reason, this year, none, none. Is that strange? So, uh, we're going to be digging in some more here, but one thing that is beautiful, my turmeric is blooming. Isn't it pretty? So let's really, literally, dig in, because usually when there's wood laying on the ground, I don't know what I'm going to find when I roll it over. You'd always find termites or something, right? There's, or bugs. Are there termites underneath here? Uh, I don't see any. That's not interesting. This is Alabama, the southeast. There's termites out here everywhere. 
Well, I can see where worms are crawling around here. There's a worm. I saw one beetle. A little gray worm. Hmm. No termites. A worm. Yeah, I'm glad I got worms. I saw one little beetle run off. No termites, no great big beetles. Here's some other wood. It's been laying here for a long time. Any termites underneath here? It's starting to rot. Break it open. No termites. Interesting. Okay, let's see what we find here. If I can manage to kick in this over. Back in the day when I was a kid, you found the wood laying on the ground, an old rotten log, you rolled it over, you'd find big old black horned beetles. And maybe termites. Are we gonna find anything in here? Let's find out. <clears throat> no termites. There's the big black horned beetles. And I see an ant. A ant. Not a lot of ants, just an ant. And something born here a little bit, maybe it's ants. It's still August. This wood's soft, I'm breaking it apart. Looking for. Ah, there's a termite. There's a few, just not many. Just not many. But that wood is old and really rotted out. Not full of them. That's got a few. Uh, so let's break it apart some more. Not a lot of activity here, just not a lot of stuff. Roll rotten wood, I expect to see more. Roll rotten wood like this. I expect to see all kind of stuff in here. Ants. Okay. Ants, that's the main thing. It's a couple termites, not many. Unusual. No big black beetles. Tear it up a little bit. It's not seeing a lot. There's all my sled bed worm beds. Got a video on that. Either coming up or already posted. So, what's going on? What's happening to the insects? My windshields are clear. There's hardly any bugs splattered on them at all. I don't have to wash them this summer, not at all, which is strange. What's going on with that? Uh, the key thing, a lot of people report plenty of insects in certain locations, and other people are finding the same thing I'm having here. But what I'm finding here just started. It just started occurring. And here I am in my log barn. Let's look at the insects. Usually, with a light like this on all night, There'd be a big swarm of insects. There's about four or five flying around in here. And that's even with this stuff, my worms here, harvested to attract them. Smell the worms. It just, you know, those are just little gnats. Nothing much. Oh, just saw a moth. Okay. That light's been on for hours. And here we are in my washroom. It's got a few plants growing. This is incandescent light. It's not fluorescent. It's white. I see one little bug flying around. There's no Worms in here to draw them around, so there you are. Where are they at? Where's the insects? So you would think there'd be a lot of bugs flying around here. All right, so it's not fully not yet, but I've got some nighttime video I've just shown you. But they're just not out here. The light's been on. Light was on in the barn. No bugs flying around. Why's that? Uh, again, like I said earlier. Uh, viewers report lots of bugs in some places. No problem. We have tons of bugs here. We have tons of bugs there. I would have told you that last year. We had tons of bugs. Just scads of them. And suddenly this year, poof, they're gone in one year. So just because you got them this year, don't mean you're going to have them next year. I don't know. Some places they don't spray as much. They use different sprays. The conditions are different. The environment is different. Some people say, it's global warming. Global warming, really? This is the coolest summer I have seen here in years. It hasn't even got to high 90s. Maybe it might have approached 90 at once. Maybe, maybe, but I don't think it really got over 96. Uh, mostly it's been 95 just two or three times. Lower 90s a few times. 
uh, right to 89, 90, a little bit, in the upper 80s. That's been our summer. Crazy cool compared. I'm talking ambient temperature. Everybody's talking uh, feels like temperatures. Forget that. We're talking ambient temperatures. Feels like always can be inflated because the humidity is always high here in the southeast. So I'm holding the light probably in the unfavorable positions when you don't like me to hold the light like this. But I was doing that just so you could see the light above me, behind me, a little better. And look, watch for bugs. Maybe you'll see a few flying around. <laughs> so again, um, just because you don't have a problem today don't mean you want tomorrow. Maybe you won't, and maybe we can turn this thing around. But in the meantime, you got to learn how to grow your own food, how to prep, and uh, and maybe agitate a little bit to, to help get these uh, neonicotinoids banned. And uh, we need to change the ways we uh, operate large-scale agriculture. Uh, you've got a video on the death of large-scale modern monoculture agriculture. I want to check that out. Uh, there are some issues with it. And the die-off of pollinators are part of it. And it rubs two ways in terms of how they affect the rest of the world around us. And it will come back to bite them too. Once again, be sure to subscribe. Click the update notification bell. Check my links below. And thank you ever so much for watching.